It worked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome everybody. Master Spas Live. We're trying something new. We're not going to talk about it just yet because it'll jinx us. Master Spas Live, Thursday, 4 o'clock. Question and answer with Ben and Mary. A little sound check. What do we got? We need somebody to hop on there. There we go. One person. Can we get a sound check, please? Sound is 10 people. Jarrett, my man. Give me a sound check, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ben and Mary. Can you guys hear us? Sound is good. All right, all right, all right. So, okay. So welcome everybody. This week, we're trying something new. We switched to the iPad, and because the phone has to be upright, I know it's really stupid, nobody really cares, but we care. So now we've got an iPad, and if you could see how I have it perched up there, it's literally about to fall down, but we're gonna go for it. Don't even say yeah, that. Don't, that don't, don't move, we're not gonna move. So, anyway, Michael Wright, Chris, how we doing? All right, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to do the question and answer. We've got them on flashcards. Uh, what, what I would really like is like the David Letterman when he throws it and it makes the broken glass sound, but it's not going to work. We're not that advanced. We're literally sitting inside a warehouse, okay? And it's just the two so, of us, so we're, we're Angela, how are you? doing the best we can with lighting and everything. It's, 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 pretty, it's, pretty it's terrible. Funny. It's terrible is what it is. That's yeah. my mom. Hello, mama. Love you. So anyway, we're gonna wait. Oh, we got 40 people on there already. Awesome. All right. So we've got questions from all over. So we started talking about, um, we put it out there on the little blurb, what we were gonna do, and we got a bunch of questions. So we're gonna go over those, and there was a lot of them seemed related to last week's live, which was installation Inside. stuff, um, chemicals, lots of chemical questions, okay? And I'm gonna give you my foolproof method for water care and water filtration. Now, if you can see this water, but you know, clear as can be, it's perfect, and I don't put a whole lot of time into it, all right? The system does the majority of the work for us. And you can also post questions here on the live and we'll answer them live yes. as well. Jared, you look great. So I'll, I'll sit up a little closer so I can see. Okay, yeah. So we've got the iPad is like back a little bit, so I'll, I'll sit here. Mary, you wanna start with the first question? Sure, yeah. Melanie? So I have a question from Kara in South Carolina who says, I am petite, five foot three. Will I float out of the corner seat for the neck and shoulders? And I am also petite. I am about four foot 10. And I do not float out of the corner seat with the neck and shoulders. However, what's one really great thing about our master spas jets in all of our swim spas and hot tubs is that they're adjustable. So right at the head of the jet, you can turn the amount of pressure that's coming out down so that if you feel like there's a specific spot that's pushing you out of the seat or making you float, if you just turn that jet down a little bit as to how much pressure is coming out, then it'll kind of relax you. But I will tell you that I'm pretty short and little and I don't float out of the seat, tell even with them, the jets them, on. Tell them how tall you aren't. I said I think I'm 4'10", maybe so not even, petite. probably not even. So. Really small, 4'10". Uh, let's so, see, we've got Robert is on there. You want to, you I'm can just throw, throw it. it. Robert, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, Jane, Ireland, I have so many chemical questions. Ah, that did not work. That's not good for the water. That's bad for chemicals. So, uh, Jane, we're going we're gonna to go through this. We're going to answer them. I am not a chemist. I'm just going to tell you what I do. I'll probably get in trouble later on for that, but that's going to be okay because it works. We also, Master Spas also has an amazing YouTube page with videos on how to take care of Shame. your water. So you can um, also refer to those videos, which actually show someone putting chemicals into a hot tub and you can go and check that out as well. Okay. So now that we can see there is lots of chemical action going on here, well, I'm gonna start with one of those. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, so this question is from Rich in Indiana. 
how do I raise my low pH when total alkalinity is already sky high? Okay, so here's the way that I understand it. All right, chemical startup video. There you go. Kayla. Thanks, Kayla. Kayla's awesome. That's, yeah. Kayla. That's Kayla, everyone. She's the backup, and she's awesome. So, uh, okay, so this is the way I understand it, Rich, in Indiana. You have to start with the alkalinity. Okay, first thing you do, just block out the pH. Don't even worry about it. You're only going to worry about the alkalinity at first. So dial in the alkalinity, and what happens often is the pH will kind of set itself up uh, in line with that at the same time. So you won't, you won't have to work too hard uh, with the pH once you dial in the alkalinity. Don't put anything else in it until that alkalinity is set, and then once they're dialed in, you can start. Okay, so the answer to that is don't worry about the pH, only adjust the al alkalinity into normal range, then pH, then start using chlorine. Okay, so that's my understanding of it. I've never had to do that once. Okay, so what's going on in our swim spot that's not elsewhere? I'm going to share that with you at the end. You have to wait till the end. All right, so let's see if I can get that out of here. There you go. Yes. Okay. These right. aren't like super strong Yeah, they're, strong not, they're not real cards. <laughs> so we, we, we had to make do. All right, what do we got? Can you demonstrate swimming in the pool? Can it be used for competitive swimmer training? Karen, uh, let's pause and answer that. Okay, yeah. so we cannot swim today because the, what you can't see behind you is the cover that's holding up the camera, and we're definitely not going to move that. But we did swim in last previous week. lives last, last week, and this is the Challenger 15. So uh, you can... Actually, two weeks ago was the swim. Last was, week, was, yeah, two, two, weeks ago. two weeks ago. Sorry. Okay, so two weeks ago. Sorry about that. Um, it, it's, you know, we are quarantined a little too. So, you know... <laughs> a lot. It's turned into scrambled eggs. Uh, does different water temp affect the chemicals that are needed? Uh, good question, David. So the colder the water, the less care and maintenance. So the hotter the water, you know, it's gonna, gonna burn up chemicals a little more. And require a little bit more that is true um, if you're talking about you know the difference between 85 and 89 not really okay so okay you want to go sure I want to put a seven to eight person hot tub on a second floor deck being built off a master bedroom is this structurally possible and that's from Brooke in Colorado and yes it is definitely possible as long as the deck is built with the knowledge that a, a hot tub is going to go on the deck. Um, so just you would want to contact your contractor and kind of coordinate with your local master spas dealer to make sure that the deck is built to support a, a 7 to 8 person hot tub. And then your, your pounds per square foot are, are typically about 85 pounds per square foot. So the, the builder will need to know that. But uh, yeah, exactly what she said. Yeah. All, right. All right. Thanks, Brooke. I, I always do this with my hands and I put them like right in the, in the, in the middle of the uh -huh. camera. I'll stop it. Leslie, how are you? It's good to see you on here. All right. Next question. How do I get my free chlorine into normal range? I've been adding shock and it barely registers on the test strip. Mary and PA. Mary with a Y and PA. So, <clears throat> okay. So I read this question as, as you actually typed it and then we, we translated this. And... What you're using, I, it read like it wasn't chlorine, it was just a, like a shock. You might have a little bit in there, but it might have just been a shock. So I'm not exactly sure what you're using, but here's what happens, okay? If, if you're just using shock, it won't register because there's not really chlorine in there. If it's, if it's a shock that has some chlorine in there, then it will, but it's not a lot. So here's what you need to understand, and this is, there's a couple questions uh, regarding this. Your EcoPure filters, they're by design, they're going to strip excess chlorine away because nobody wants excess of chlorine. So you want it to be you know, clean and clear, but you also don't want, you know, you don't want to smell it like that and you don't want to ruin bathing suits and hair and skin and all that. So the EcoPure uh, filter system is really designed to get rid of that. So if you're putting in a bunch of chlorine, the EcoPure is trying to strip and get rid of it. That's okay. what's so great about it. Right. So that That's you're not actually it. ever in So the that, that means you don't need that much. Okay. Uh, we're going to share it. Should we never recommend using salt water? That's right. That's right. Salt water, we will void your big, beautiful warranty. Okay. And it's just not necessary. So at the end of this, I'm going to tell you guys what I do. And it's very easy. 
and you can see our water is perfect. All right. And we swim he in does here. A really great we job. swim in here a lot. And it's not that I'm that good at it. It's very easy if you do it this way. Okay? So that question, and it's going to come up in a few of the other questions. Actually, ask the next one from Diane in Texas. Okay. So directly related. Diane in Texas. We cannot seem to keep any chlorine registering for more than a day. That's great. That's exactly what we're looking for with the EcoPure. It takes a day to strip it out of there. Okay, so it's by design is getting rid of excess chlorine on purpose so that it's not stinking up the situation. Okay, you want to use some to sanitize. You don't want enough in there to, you know, kill birds flying over. Okay? And that, that's also, I'm sorry to jump in, but that's also what makes our products so great for people who have sensitive skin because you're actually, if you do it correctly and, and treat it correctly, you're never really in any chlorine when you're using the hot tub or swim spa. It's really just kind of to sweep up after, which is which is a needed, but you, you don't have to be sitting in it and it's much better, much more gentle on your skin and for your hair. Um, so I have super sensitive skin and I never experience any issues in, in the swim spa. Okay. Or from the swim spa. So we've got a question on there from Christopher in Los Angeles um, saying how much is set up and delivery in Los Angeles? Impossible for us to answer that. We have 16 different model swim spas. There's all kinds of different options. We always get a couple of people that, that jump on the live. How much? There's so many variables. It, it's like calling a, a car dealership and saying, how much is a car? All right, it's really tough for us to answer that. And there's so many variables. Uh, shipping is a variable. Your distance is a variable. Um, all kinds of stuff. Options, which model, how fast do you wanna go? All kinds of stuff. So it's impossible for us to answer that. Okay, um, literally impossible. There, we would have to ask you, you know, 30 more questions and be your dealer. The right? best thing would be to go to our website and, and look at where your closest dealer is and they'll get in contact with you to give you more specific information. Okay. I'll so, go. go ahead. I have a question from Pat in Illinois who Hi, asks, do you know if insurance would cover some cost for ankle replacement exercise or cost of a, of a swim spa or hot tub? I will say that I know Ben's been doing this longer than I have, but it is extremely rare to see that insurance has covered any of it, but it would be say it, something... Say it, say it like I say it. It's a unicorn? It, yes. <laughs> An insurance company... Can I... Rock? This is like I'm known for saying this. And we, we all want to believe that unicorn exists, but no one's ever seen one. Right. Okay. An insurance company is actually paying for something is sort of like that. Okay, we all would like that to be the case, but we've never actually seen it. Um, the one case that we have seen was a terrible workers' comp case. Right. Uh, workers' comp insurance paid for it, and it was. Not and the worth and the, it. the I was just gonna say the the customer had to do. All, I oh. mean, it, it's 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 actually your kind of. Uh, being an advocate for yourself and you trying to get them to reimburse right, you. Right. They wouldn't ever put the money up up, up front. If that's it. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay. Let's see. That one got, I heard it actually hit the yeah. floor. They did a good job on that one. Is it advisable to have a swim spot outdoors with some type of temporary cover? Are they difficult to move if I move homes? That's from Deborah in Illinois. Good question. So, a temporary cover, I'm assuming that you mean the housing and not the cover that, that we provide. The cover we provide is made for outside. Uh, it's a snow load cover, works awesome. When it snows, not one flake of that snow will, yeah, I'm talking with my hands again. But we have to keep them dry, so I'll try to keep them over here. So the snow load cover works fantastic. If it snows on there, uh, the snow's not gonna melt. You'll have to clean it off to open it. Works really well. I think what you're asking is, should you put a little temporary housing type situation over it? Are you open for customers to purchase chemicals? Uh, we're gonna let Fort Wayne answer that because uh, we definitely are not gonna take care of that. So <clears throat> I don't really think that's necessary to put a temporary housing over it. Um, if it's part of your design to put it in a pergola or something like that, well then that's fine and it's kind of sheltered that way. They are made to go fully outside, full, hardcore, terrible environments, you know, very cold, Winnipeg, Canada stuff, 
you know, uh, south, south and south. North, Daco North Dakota. Uh, north Dakota, you know, terrible temperatures and they're outside year round, totally made for it. So you don't have to do any of that stuff uh, to build a temporary housing uh, for it, uh, for, the, for the year round, even in your climate, uh, Illinois, which obviously is very cold, okay? Hi gang, keep up the good work. Thank you, Sean, how are you? All right, so, uh, no, one more, There's two. that's a two part yes. question. Deb, Illinois, I didn't forget you. Are they difficult to move if I move homes? No, it, it, it's simply what happens is it's a bigger factor where you're moving to than actually just moving it. So for example, you know, uh, we're up in Connecticut and uh, the dealership up here is East Coast Spas. A uh, little shout out to Uncle Dan and East Coast Spas. So they move swim spas all the time for people and it's not really a matter of you know, sending a crew for a couple hours of labor. It's just a couple hours of labor to move one. It's not a, not a problem at all. Um, but if you were moving across country, well, then you probably wouldn't want to pay them to transport it over there. You'd probably want to set it up where maybe the dealer there reinstalled it and they helped you load it onto a trailer or the moving company or something like that. So, but we move them all the time. Okay, so yes, absolutely. But if you were moving locally, it's a non-issue. In fact, I got an email today uh, requesting help to move one that we put in and, and it will be moved in June. Okay? So, yes, you can move it easily. And no, you don't need a house for the swim spot. Go ahead. I have a question from Janet in North Carolina who asks, what is your smallest swim spa? I need to fit it in a two car garage. So our smallest swim spa is our Thera pool, which is 11 feet by eight feet. And then they go up from there. So that um, 11 feet by 8 feet is the smallest one we have. Will easily fit in a garage. Yes. So we, we put, if it's a standard size garage, we put uh, 15 and 18 footers in there often. Okay. Um, we live in a community, this is from, oh, I can't see the name, Andrea. Andrea Martin, we live in a community where any improvements must be approved by the HOA. Do you help with this process? Um, that would be a situation where your dealer will absolutely help you with that. Um, we will provide, typically we would provide any documentation you need to cover, um, dimension sizes, that sort of thing. Um, it, it's, it's really not a big deal to get an HOA approval. Um, pretty easy. They don't even really deal with setbacks where the town might deal with that. Especially because they're affordable. Right. So right. they're not like in, you know, they're not like pools. Right. So. They're, they're mostly concerned with safety and, uh, and we will typically always help with that. I don't know where you are. So your, your dealer, whoever was doing the install for you, will, will absolutely help you with that, yeah. okay? Hi, Laura, how are you? David, I know there are LED lights around the swim spot, but can you change the colors of the lights? Good question. Can, so you, right, can you see them? Yeah, you can yeah. See them. actually, if you look right here, purple, blue, green, I like the one that rotates through it. Yeah, there, there, yeah there's a mode. If you keep Every turning time, yeah. the lights on and off, it'll come up with a mode that kind of rotates through all the other, all the colors. There's like eight or nine colors. Eight. Eight. Eight, eight, eight colors. colors. And they look really neat. They do. They're awesome. It, in, in the dark, they're amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, yes, you can change the color. Eight different colors or have it scroll through. Okay. Is it your turn? Your my turn. turn. My turn. Where on the master spot does the plug come out and how long is the cord? That's Dean in, is that Hawaii? Yes. Hawaii. Yeah. Dean in Hawaii. Uh, wish I was there. Me too. So, okay, how long is the cord? I'm assuming you're talking about the 110 uh, plug-in. That's the one that's going to have the cord. We do get asked often if our spas have just a plug-v plug-in or if it's a direct wire. So I'm going to assume you're talking about the 110 and um, they come out kind of, if you, if you, I'm making sure I've got this right. Oh, I'm, I'm very sure I'm right. Um, comes out on the bottom and there's little kind of tracks inside for the cord to come out of the bottom. And then it, I believe it's 10 or 12 feet long is the cord. And it's got it's a- It's 10 feet. 10 feet? Yeah. 10 feet, go with 10. I could be wrong, okay? Go with 10, it's better safe than sorry. And then it's got the GFIs built right in the, right. In the plug. Yeah. In the plug, so it's really easy. So it does have a GFI. And the next question that you should be asking, if you ask that question, is how many amps does it require? It's 15, not 20. Okay, so a, a standard plug in a house is 15, although it still needs to be dedicated. Um, most people all the time, what we see often in, in 
we're just telling you what we see, not what is recommended, because what's recommended is a dedicated line. But if, it, if you have an outside circuit and there's nothing else on it, people do that all the time. And it's very easy to just make sure your electrician uh, says that what you're doing is safe. Okay, Sheila, how are you? Uh, what do we got here? Andrea, is the decking optional? Also, do you offer financing? Okay, those are definitely dealer questions on the financing front. Um, I think all of our dealers have financing. Yeah, I think so. so. Master, you know, yeah, yes, yes on the financing. And then is the decking optional? I'm not sure what you mean by decking. Do you mean the cabinet? You'll have to clarify that that one for me, Andrea. I'm not sure what you mean. So the deck, the, the cabinet is standard. You can pick the color. And then if oh, she could be talking about the picture of that deck. Yeah, and which is not part of the swim spot at all. Right. So That's a separate kit that was just used for the pictures. Some of some of the, the kit that you're you might be I think you're referring to is is from A and B accessories and it's a it's a simple kit. Okay. Um, not an expensive though. Actually I'm gonna go because this my question kind of goes with your elect electricity question. So I have one from Annie in New York who asks a two part question, but the first part is what electricity is needed. And for most of our hot tubs and swim spas, it's 240 volts and a designated 50 amp breaker. We do have a few exceptions where you might need 100 amps. And then we also have a few that are actually the 110 with the 15 amps like Ben already talked about. So I hope that answers that part. And then the second part of Annie's question is, can the spa be moved in the future? And we talked about that already with Ben, and, and yes, it absolutely can, and we do it quite often. So thanks, All right. Annie. All right, we've got, what do we got up there? We got uh, Carolyn. We love our 12-foot H2X trainer in our sunroom. The whole family awesome. love it. That is absolutely yeah. awesome. Richard Markovich, how are you, buddy? There was a question on there. I missed it. It went away. Oh, uh, don't touch that. Not touching. <laughs> We we'll get to you. We'll the get iPad, back to it later. We get, we'll, we'll get back to it in the comments. The, the the camera, the iPad is very precariously perched, so we're going to leave that alone and not touch it right now. But there was a question up there that I was going to answer, and I, I lost it. Okay, next question is from Jenny in Indiana. Lots lots from Indiana. The idea of a dual temp is appealing, but in order to use the hot tub portion, wouldn't we be paying to heat the entire spa's water? Okay, so what what the way it was worded, we got the. Uh, my spa is one year old. Uh, Anthony, you definitely need to call your dealer on that one. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, so what we, we read your email, uh, Jenny, your question, and what we believe is you were talking about the dual temperature and saying, do you have to heat the whole thing because in the wintertime you just want to use the uh, hot, hot tub, tub side. Portion. So you do need to heat the whole thing. There's, this is a two or three part answer. You do need to heat the whole thing because there's actually a pass-through that keeps the, the levels level so that you can't winterize one side if that's what you're asking. Um, and you can, you can turn that side all the way down, although I will tell you that they are very efficient and I have not had a complaint. I've never no. heard a complaint. So we've got this guy, I'm going to tell the signature, and he's in Northern, yeah, this guy's a lunatic. Story. So this guy, this guy has a, a Michael Phelps signature swim spa. It's the fastest swim spot we've ever made. Uh, someone just asked what swim spa we're in. Challenger 15. Awesome swim spa. So this guy, North New Jersey, has obviously cold. He has a signature and he's not a swimmer. He does cannonballs in it every single day. He keeps it at 99 degrees all year round. Doesn't care. It's the biggest hot tub in the world. And that's what he uses it for. And his electric bill is between in the winter of December through you know February March, is an additional eighty to hundred dollars a month. He comes and he he comes back and sees us every year and grabs filters or whatever he needs. Yeah. And we just love to see this guy. He opens up the cover every day in the winter time and just does cannonballs in the thing. All and year he's long. I mean he said during the warmer months it doesn't really uh, cost him anything. So yeah. on average it's really pretty yeah. So they're efficient. They're, they're really and efficient. Cost, cover yeah. works well. You can't go wrong with that. So my, my advice to you would be to, you know, if you're not going to use the swim spa side, just turn it down a little bit and don't worry about it too much and enjoy the hot tub side. You'll love it. And uh, it's so wonderful. Yeah, after the first year, you're never going to go back to not using it. So you, you're, you'll use it well, we promise. Okay, so that's the answer on that one. That Those it. were the last of our pre-asked questions. Okay, 
So now, what do we got for questions that are live? I know there are different jet styles available, but can you change out one jet for another? David. Okay, David, yes you can. So in most of the swim spas, there are a couple exceptions to that rule, but in most of the swim spas, certainly the one that we're sitting in, you can actually take the jets out. So I'll take one out. He's and in, in this swim spa, we have three different kinds of jets. So there's a deep tissue jet, there's a spinner jet that kind of pulsates, and then there's a gentle, kind of like a shower head jet. And there's three different kinds that you can move to different spots by the size that they are. So yes, you can do that. Okay. That, deep tissue, gentle, you see the difference, and they point, okay? Obviously they come out, they're interchangeable, and then there's a spinner, there's what, a spinner one, you wanna see that? Sure. sure. Find the spinner, can you hold it? That's the spinner. They all feel different and you can interchange them. So those are the same jets that our, our Twilights have, um, which is a tub, that, a hot tub that we're really well known for and it is a beast. So yes, the answer is yes. I'm in the UK, have you got a dealer for your spas? Yes. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Um, I, I can't tell you their address off the top of my head, but I know that they I know there. there's one called Hot Tub Superstore, but I, that's all I know. Or even where it is. You, I, it, could yeah. be, it could be 700 miles away. We have no idea. But yes, there, there definitely is. Do you need to maintain access to all four sides panels or only the main side panel? That's Brooke. Good question. Okay, we get asked this a lot. This, in this, this applies, most of this stuff applies to, my foot out of there. most of this stuff applies to hot tubs and swim spots. Okay, so if you look, actually, you can't quite see it. Our sits, it's this far away from the wall. Um, Mary can just slide back there to turn the heat on. It's that far off. If you needed to service it, you could never do that. Okay, so the rule is you want to keep two to three feet around it. The official answer is three. Um, two feet, we can get in there. That's okay. So you want to keep that space open around it for service. But, so ours is inside a warehouse, so we need to you know maximize space. So it's, it's really close to that wall. Now, worst case scenario, if we had to service something in there, it's on a flat floor. We can drain the water out and just slide it out. It's portable, that's the best part. So you just slide it out, make a repair, put it back. Um, I don't recall ever seeing one really needed to go in on the side for service. So we really recommend that the ends, the skinny ends, the eight foot ends are always accessible. And then the outsides can be the ones that you can put up against something. You just have to be able to get to them in case of something happening, um, which has not been, ever happened to me in any of the ones that I've had. Um, or I don't even recall ever seeing it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure it's and, happened and, somewhere. And your, most of the service is done behind this, on this side side here. Yeah. Uh, let's see, we've had our LSX one here. Let's see, I couldn't be happier. Travis, awesome. Yeah, the LSX, that is a beast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as beastly as they get. Christopher, can you place these on top of artificial turf or best directly on concrete? You definitely don't want to go on artificial turf. Um, whatever's underneath it needs to be properly installed. So if it's, you know, if you're doing pavers or easy pads, the, the best thing is always going to be cement, six inch reinforced. Uh, actually, even four inch reinforced would be fine. Um, then you just want to make sure that whatever's done is done correctly. We talked about this last week in the install and it comes up a lot. And I think that cement scares some people, so they're, they're always looking for something else or, you know, in some parts of the country, cement is cheap. And, and then, like, you go to New York and then they kill you on, you know, cement, anything. So it's just a matter of, of what's what. But if you do pavers, they need to dig down, you know, a, a good, solid process base, compacted with the sand and, and then lined with pavers properly, compacted again so that it doesn't move. So whatever, whatever is done underneath it, it just needs to be done correctly. The easy pads are something that we see often. You need to dig down, process stone, you know, compact it, and then, and then put the easy pads on top of it, and you'll never have a problem. They just need to be installed correctly, okay? Uh, but I would not go on top of artificial turf or actually artificial turf. Maybe if you put some like the depending what like, was yeah depending right. on what was underneath it yeah so if if this was like inside a gym and they have artificial turf on top of cement floor well yeah then it wouldn't really matter so I don't know what the exact um, but 
But not if it was just on the grass, I guess. If there was just like earth underneath, you wouldn't want to do that. Adam Price, I downloaded the thousand off voucher for your website. Will that be valid for the UK dealer? I don't know. That's a good question right there. You got us, you got us on that one. I, I want to assume that if you were able to see it wherever you are, that it will be good. But it, that is an assumption on my part. I probably owe them a thousand bucks now. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll we'll make it right by them if if we do. Okay. So I'm assuming if you can see it, it's probably probably meant for you. Is there an owners group where we can go to share information and ideas? That's an interesting idea. I don't believe there is that I know. I of. mean, you could probably. I mean, master spas. Start it. Or but even master spas on the page. On the if Facebook you post page. something, a lot of our current customers. It's probably, it's probably Probably meant they are probably only post. Oh, okay. So you're talking about an owner's Sorry. group. That's kind of neat. Um, I don't know if there is, so that means you need to start it. Yeah. Okay. I'm in Central Florida. Is there a showroom when I where I can see your products? Um, I don't have the exact addresses. There are showrooms, multiple showrooms in Florida. I don't know exactly where they are. Just pop in the dealer locator and put your address in, and they'll they'll get you in line with uh, whoever you need to be in line with. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, do you have a recommendation on where to find someone to install the base properly? I'm having a hard time finding someone, Suzanne. I don't know where you're at, so uh, it's tough for me to answer that. So that I, that I can't answer. I can tell you this: um, often we look for landscapers. So I don't I, I don't know where you are. I'm in Connecticut, so I don't know that I can help you. Um, I can tell you this: often you know maybe not a landscape uh, landscaper who just kind of specializes in yard maintenance and grass. But maybe like a landscape, he does little construction jobs, does paver jobs, does uh, you know reinforcer or, or retaining walls. That kind of a guy will have a little machine. They'll they'll be the one you're looking for. So I would look for a landscape. And contractor. you may ask your local dealer. Sometimes the dealers you know have a relationship yeah. with someone or they know somebody who does it. Okay, I'll let you take the next one. I can't see it. <laughs> let me hold on. Um, Get up there. Which would you recommend? I can't see it. Oh my goodness. Oh my. I totally missed that question. You're laughing at me. Leave me alone. Uh, I missed the question. I'm it was, so it was, sorry. It was a family of four. Family of four, and he's a triathlete. I saw that. Okay. It, scroll, it scrolls up, and we can't touch it because it'll fall down. We, we can always answer back yes, afterwards, yes. too. Yes. Which one would we recommend? He said, we love hot tubs. I remember this. We love hot tubs. Which one would you recommend? I'm assuming oh. you're asking, so tell them. I was just say, family of four. Yeah, I would, I would uh, first of all, everyone thinks, you know, four people isn't that money to fit in a hot tub. But four people, once you get everybody in there, it can get pretty cozy pretty quickly. <laughs> um, so if you have room for an 8 by 8 hot tub, that's really great spacing wise and four people fit really comfortably in an eight by eight and personally i just recommend the twilight series just because the jets in there are really awesome you for recovery swim spa, oh and if it's a swim spa then the challenger is amazing the one we're sitting in it, yeah and it, the swim is really awesome it's and it's and it's plenty of room for our family to hang out and and have fun in as well so, and normally I wear glasses, especially for computer reading. So yes, I'm scrunching, scrunching because I can't read that close. Sorry. Thanks. That was man. great. That was awesome. Okay, uh, let's see. For your swim spot, do you have a unit that cools the water, like a chiller unit? We do not. Um, I know that they exist. Uh, we do not manufacture a chiller unit. Uh, that's called a chiller. Uh, we do not. So I have seen them. Cooley Swim Spa, Swim Spa, Challenger 15. Yes. Any, yeah. any triathlete, family of whatever, Challenger 15, unless you want the dual temp, it is a freaking beast. And uh, we absolutely love this. This thing is just amazing. Okay. So actually, let's talk about how I take care of this chemical. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I have rules. Um, how often do chemicals need to be added and how often do you need to change the water? Brooke, good question. Good timing. Yeah. So... This is the Challenger 15, as we've stated many times before. It is uh, 1,895 gallons of water. So in this facility, we have city water that's pretty good. So we this water has been in here December? Yeah, December. Five months? Yeah. yeah, five months. So call it five months, all right? 
Uh, it's nowhere near needing to be changed. No, it's perfect. And we swim in here. We keep the water fairly warm. I, I like warm water. We keep it 88, 89 degrees. Even for swimming, we don't mm -hmm. care. We're not going to be uncomfortable. I just don't want to be cold. And we're in the Northeast, and it I'm even more of a wimp than he is, stinks, so the warmer the better. <laughs> stinks here anyway, weather-wise. I'm trying not to use bad words. So, anyway, so we fill it up with water, and then don't put any chemicals in it. Close the covers, turn the temperature up. And then the first thing that we use is called Protect Plus, okay? And that's just going to get all the junk out of there. Um, it's going to it's going to take care of any minerals, any hard stuff that's in there, and it's going to protect all your parts, all your goodies, okay? So it's like a I'm not a chemist, and I and I don't sell chemicals, so it's a bottle. It's about that big. It's a good Is it size. Like a liter. It's not it's a, a little liter, bit more than a liter, liter of cola. Yeah. So it's a, it's about a liter. It's not the eight ounce. It's bigger than that, and and we put the whole bottle in. Okay, I don't measure anything, whole bottle, just like that. And then you want to clean the filters out the next day uh, while it's heating up. So it takes a, takes a while to heat. We trickle the heat in there so that it doesn't, doesn't, oh my God, my brother's on there. Scotty, how are you? So, <laughs> Scott. so then what you want to do is then when it's up to temperature, then if you want to use the test strip, I don't even use the test strip. Okay, I don't use them at all. I've never put a test strip inside this swim spa. So basically... And, and you just have to say it. You can't let anybody pee in there. All right? That's what messes up your pH and your alkalinity and that stuff. Even if you're is, swimming in a wetsuit, triathletes. No that's peeing right. That's in right. The swim spa. This is not the pool. This is not the ocean. There's no peeing in your wetsuit. Okay? So that's probably the biggest thing. And then from there, you know, all we're doing, so you've got a corona discharge ozone that's, that's doing a lot of the work. You've got the eco pure filters that are doing a lot of the work. So all we're treating for is what we leave behind. So... I always tell people, just like Mary said earlier, to use chlorine like a broom, okay? So swim, do your thing, and we're probably swimming in there 30 to 45 minutes each, four times a week. So there's a lot, that's a lot of use, and the water's warm, so there, we're definitely sweating in there, and then we'll hit it with chlorine after we're done. I don't even measure it. Literally take the bottle cap, sh -sh -sh, throw it in, that's it. I'm using enough to grab onto what we've left behind in there and that's it. And then once a week or every other week, if I remember, I'll, I'll put a little shock in there. Um, so what I look for, I open up a hot tub cover, the swim spot cover, and I make sure that I can see the bottom details of the tub clearly. So if I see the bottom of the tub, especially a swim spot, because it's like four feet of water, and it's totally clear, and then you touch the side, can you hear that? That's squeaky clean. There's no algae. There's no buildup of gunk on there. So if, if I can see the detail on the bottom of the swim spa and it's squeaky clean and the water smells good, I know that that water is, is perfect. So I know that there's going to be people that are, are going to hammer what we do. But I'll tell you this. I don't even use test strips and our water looks awesome all the time. That's all I do. Okay. So no contaminants. Hit it with a little bit of chlorine every time you get out. You know, we always refer to that as the blood sugar method. You don't want spikes, okay? Super easy. So if you've got kids playing in there all day, you're going to need to use a little more. And you also probably want to go under the belief that one of them maybe had a little accident in there. And two, like especially if you're using it with your kids. Maybe it um, wasn't an accident. <laughs> they're probably, you know, if they've got sunscreen on in the summertime, that you'll want to probably want to treat a little bit harder and rinse out your filters a little bit more often. Because that sunscreen is not, you know, there's some of it is going to come out in the water. And just on a personal note, I, when I wash my bathing suit, I don't put it in the dryer because I use fabric softener because I like it. Um, so, and I think that that kind of can um, mess up the water chemistry as well. So I just, I just air dry my bathing suits. Just, that's just a personal note of, on me. Yep. Right on. Um, we had a question on the dual temp. Do you treat both sides? Yes, treat both sides because it, it's just a small pass through. I would not rely on that for treating both sides. And I would use, obviously, just use less in the hot tub portion than you would in right. the swim spot. Right, right. You're right. Uh, can you make the volume louder? Um, no, we cannot control that. It is, the microphone is on. Oh, there we go. Filter cycle just kicked on. So the bubbles are coming from the hot tub or swim spot, not us. <laughs> So uh, we cannot control the volume. It, it's recording at that, and you have to control that. Someone said you look thrilled to be there. I don't know if that, what that means. So jealous you're all here. sitting in that. Yes, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so how different is the turbulence between the H2X swim spot models? 
Kim. So are you asking the difference in the turbulence between the H2X to other H2Xs or the H2X to the Challenger and the Phelps? I'm not sure exactly between your H2X swim spa models. I'm assuming that you mean between the H2X and the Challenger, okay? Um, Brooke, do you ever need to change out the water and if so, how often? Um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna go back to the turbulence and finish up with Brooke because she asked that before. Um, this water is five months old and nowhere near changing it, so it's absolutely gonna, gonna go a full year and then um, we will change it out at probably the year mark, but there's no, no sign of it needing anything. It's never cloudy. Uh, the way we take care of it, and I know it'll easily last a year. Uh, Kim, two other H2Xs, they are all the same. Okay, the only exception on the H2X front that's different is going to be the H2X Trainer versus the H2X Challenger. They're totally different. Okay, so this is a Challenger, so you have three pumps for swimming, and they're airless, so it's it's a really, and it, there's more more swim jets up front, so it's a wider current, it's a calmer current, it's a deeper, thicker current, um, and there's no air in there. So it's it's really nice current, okay? We also have a video from a while ago on Facebook Live that we talked about the different oh, yeah, currents. Yeah. And show them. And show you the differences between the, the Challenger current and the H2X trainer current. So you can check that out too. Oh, here we go. So no one ever, uh, Claudia, someone asked about the Clarity, I missed that. So someone asked what our experience was with the new Clarity Balance 9. I didn't see who it was. Oh, it looks so awesome. Yeah, yeah. no one ever asked us hot tub stuff, but we love hot tubs, so, yeah. you know, and we're around them all the, all the time. We've never so. been in it wet yet. I've never, yeah, I've never, never but been in it. But dry, either. it's It's awesome. awesome, it's huge. The thing <laughs> yeah. is so bad to the bone. Yeah. So I clean that up nice. Yeah. Kenny Cormack, what's up my man? Ryan, we own a 15D, love it, great info. Awesome. The H2X Trainer 15D, Ryan, is the number one most sold swim spa in the world. And it's like the Ford F-150. You it can't go wrong so with it. It is so awesome. Unreal, the thing is spot. just awesome, just awesome. Uh, and it swims really well also, uh, really well also. It does, yeah. it does. There's videos of us swimming in the H2X Trainer 15 all the time. Um, lifespan of H2X, I saw that before it popped up as long as you want it. So, you know, you'll need to do proper maintenance in there, but there's no reason that that shouldn't last you 20, 25 years with good care and maintenance, okay? Um, oh, I missed that one. Joe, it was me. I work for Master Spots in Northern. <laughs> <laughs> Too much time on your hands. Everybody's <laughs> literally locked in the house. Will you see when the water needs to be changed? Uh, will you see when the water needs to be changed, David? Okay, good question. So what I look for is, if I'm treating it with a little bit of chlorine like we do, the blood blood sugar method, and then one day later it's starting to be a little cloudy, I'll know that that water is dead and it's time to go. So you'll see it cloud um, when, it, when it's just, because you know there's no contaminants in here, so I'll know easily when it's time to change. So that's it. Uh, what else do we do? Yes, uh, Patricia, yes, it, we, we post it and it's on there forever. Is it possible to override the 99 degrees? Claudia Spinner. Good question. I'm going to answer that. I'm going to answer that. I, I have been instructed to always tell the truth, and I'm going to. So, right now, the swim spots that are produced are limited to 99 degrees. So that is a, um, if I'm not mistaken, a California I, efficiency I so, yeah. efficiency concern, and that was made that way. Um, how we did that, you read this how we were able to control it to 99 degrees and limit it there was on the circuit board, there's what's called a dip switch. And we switched it from you know basically high to low and low caps it at 99. But when it was on high, and in, you know a year or two ago, they were all always on high, went to 104 like any other hot tub. Okay, so that is the answer. Um, right now- It would be something that a certified electrician can help out with, uh, right? Well. Uh, yeah, so so it's just a dip switch. That's how we achieve that 99 degrees. So it's just a little switch in there. You do with that information whatever you like, okay? All right, uh, message us, we'll help you out. Okay, good. <laughs> we're, we're dancing around that one. Uh, we did last week in the local dealer. We have called in about, okay. Yes, so it's just a dip switch. All right, next question. What do we got? 
like that was, you, you know, like uh, like legal questions. We got to be careful with. All right, I think that's it. Is that it? Anyone? Anyone? So I'm sure I know that there's questions in there that we missed. The one that I missed. I I, I, I know that I saw them, I saw them like flying through. Yeah. They, they came in rapid fire for a bit. Um, live life, live life, live life, live life. What kind of warranty do these spots have? Uh, awesome warranty. Yeah. So it's right on our website. You can look up uh, H2X Swim Spa warranties. Absolutely fantastic. Long. Just flip the switch. Change the max temp. What he said. All right. So there you go. So last thing, uh, housekeeping. Sure. Not cleaning. Yes. Keeping housekeeping. So right now, Master Spa's production line not running. Okay, we're still erring on the side of safety with the uh, stuff that's going on. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say its ugly name. Okay. And <clears throat> but we still have stock, and most of our dealers are up and running. I know that in the Northeast they are slinging, Slammed. slinging product into yards, installing, delivering, taking care of everything. So everything is, is full operations and they're all, uh, you know, really cranking. So yeah. get online, find out who your dealer is, send an email, send a message, call. And there's plenty of product yep. built and ready to go. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. I think that's it. All right. My hands are wet. Yeah. So this is why we keep our hands up because then you can't touch anything. And Thank then, you guys for coming and asking your questions today. We we uh, really enjoyed answering them. Yep. And we'll see awesome, you next week on Facebook Live on Thursday, next week. And we will check back on yeah. the comments and answer anything. You can you can send us questions in. And if you have any questions for either of us, just put our name on there. And we'll answer and get you taken care of. All right? And thank you to Kayla. Yes. For backing us up. Because if there's stuff that we can't see... She's, she's in the background typing answers. She puts the links in. She which puts the awesome. links in, yeah. which Thanks, is awesome. Kayla. So she's awesome. Everybody say thank you to Kayla. And we will see you in a week. And we don't know what the topic is going to be yet because they haven't told us. <laughs> All right? Have a good one. Enjoy.